Great Sister Mary taking care of the service last Wednesday night. Did a wonderful job. So appreciate her. Just delivering her heart. Pouring out her heart up here. That's not always easy to do. But she did it with uh, passion, with fire, with fervency. And exactly what the Lord placed upon her heart. And if she's like me, she had probably had some notes prepared. And then the Lord started adding stuff to you while you're up here. And you're like, Lord, you didn't put that in my notes. You're scaring me here. It used to scare me when I first started preaching. I'd, I'd have my notes, and I'd have a notebook like this, and I'd have 14, 15 pages. And then I'd go through those pages, and I was done. I didn't know what to do next. And I'd usually get done with those in about five minutes. But So I didn't know what to do next. So I learned to start preaching without notes. So when I ran out of notes, I would know what to do. So I would never run out of notes. So uh, that's the way the Lord touched and moved in my early ministry. And I use more notes now than I used to. But I'm thankful for her, appreciate her uh, just delivering her heart. Uh, just even listening to it online, listening to it through the Spreaker broadcast, you could tell she was just uh, had a burden and uh, delivered that burden. She later texted me and told me just that, but I knew that just from listening to it. So we appreciate her coming, praying, and delivering uh, not what she wanted to say, but what she felt like the Lord would have her to say. And uh, we appreciate her so much. As we continue tonight on Psalms 119, we're going to be in our next stanza, which is stanza 19. We've just got a few more stanzas of the psalm. Probably 1st of August we'll be finishing up with Psalms 119 as we started it on Sunday night. And here a few weeks ago we moved it over to Wednesday night. But uh, verse 145, verse 145 is where we're going to pick up uh, this evening. Psalms 119, and we'll be reading through verse 152. 145 through 152 makes up the 19th stanza of Psalms 119, which is all about the word. We've talked a lot about the word, had a, a lot of different uh, ti- titles, but it all comes back to the word of God, being about the word of God. Psalmist said here, I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. I hoped in thy word. Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgment. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth concerning thy testimonies. I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. Tonight, as we look at this stanza, Psalms 119, I just titled tonight, we've, we've talked last time about the righteous word of God, and we've just had so many titles and thoughts of this it's through each stanza, and each one of them, in some form or fashion, has mentioned the words, the commands, the precepts of God. As I begin to, to read this and begin to study this and begin to prepare uh, myself for tonight, and as I, just, as I read through those verses, I just couldn't uh, help but the title of this tonight, The Tear-Stained Word. The Tear-Stained Word. As the psalmist said, I cried with my whole heart. I cried unto thee, save me. And he prevented not the dawning of the morning and cried, I hope, in thy word. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that this evening, about the tear-stained word of God. Father, we're grateful to you for the word. We're thankful for this psalm. Psalms 119 and all that it entails and all that it has for us and all that it offers for us. And I just pray this evening that you would just let your word find good place in our heart tonight, God. I pray, God, that you would just speak to the hearts of the believers, Lord. I ask you to draw us closer to you and your will and your way through the word of God tonight, Lord. We just surrender ourselves to whatever you speak to our hearts. And we want to be sensitive to your spirit, sensitive to your will. And I pray, Lord, that you would just draw us ever closer to you and your purpose and your plan through this midweek service. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. I cried with my whole heart, the psalmist said in verse 145 and 146. He said, I cried unto thee, save me. He said in verse 147, I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. He said, I hoped in thy word. 
said, My eyes prevented the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Hear my voice, he said in 149, 150. He said, They draw not that after mischief they are far from thy law. He went on to say about concerning his testimonies of how he has found him to be true. So as we, we look here, this psalmist is singing a song, praying a prayer, delivering his heart. And he's saying with all of his heart, with all of his heart, that he is in complete sincerity, with undivided devotion. This is what the psalmist is doing. He's with everything that is within him, completely sincere. Not, not, no other devotion, no other commitment. Uh, he's not divided in his thoughts. He's not divided in his way. It seems like in every stanza that we've studied here in Psalms 119 that the psalmist reminds uh, the Lord and reminds himself and reminds us as the reader uh, that there are those that just will not keep God's law. Uh, He he began to share that and he said, but though others do that, uh, though there may be those divided in their devotion, uh, it it may seem like in your Christian walk that you know some that uh, that they're not... Completely sincere. They're not. They may be dividing their time between God and other things. How many of those that don't work? That don't work. And the psalmist is saying here, with all of his heart, in complete sincerity and with undivided devotion, uh, he's crying out to the Lord, uh, and he's crying out to the Lord. Why? Uh, because he needs an answer. He's crying out to God uh, with all of his heart, uh, with all of his devotion. Uh, One of the psalmists said in another place, uh, some say this was David. They're unsure of Psalms 119, whether it's David or not. Matthew Henry uh, seems to think it's David, uh, but there's others that that don't know. Uh, But in another place, uh, David, uh, in his Psalms, I believe it was, uh, that he penned these words and he cried uh, until he has no more tears. Uh, So here he is crying unto the Lord uh, to answer him in his time of need. When you need something from God, you too must with all of your heart in complete sincerity, with undivided devotion, just as the psalmist, cry out to the Lord in your time of need and open up the Word of God because many times we say I can't hear the Lord. I've prayed and the Lord didn't answer me. Well, the psalmist is letting us know all through Psalms 119 if you need an answer from God Look at his word. He wrote the book. He's got the answer there. God, you begin to pray to God and uh, and you see that God has that answer for you. Uh, There's some people, some professionals, some uh, uh, professors and different ones, doctors. uh, You can ask them a question and they'll tell you, well, just buy my book. The answer's in there. Uh, So we begin to cry out to God and God will do that. He'll he'll tell us, you don't have to buy the book. Uh, Just look at the book. You can go to any church and they'll give you one. You don't have one. Look in the back of the pew there's somewhere there uh, open up God's book and he's got an answer for you and when you begin to the psalmist is not only crying sister Mary because uh, of his need uh, and, and because of his sincerity tears are not flowing just from a sincerity of his prayer uh, but he finds the answer in the word of God uh, and when you cry out to God uh, and then you find the answer in the word of God uh, tears begin to come forth uh, tears of sorrow turn into tears of excitement uh, and when we begin to take this to prayer with us, uh, I guarantee you uh, it won't take long that it'll be the tear-stained Word of God. Uh, it'll be tear-stained because uh, you've wept uh, in the night season for your lost loved ones. Uh, you've wept for a need or a burden or a situation uh, that you've had need of uh, and you've had the Word of God there. Uh, and then you open up the Word of God and find that His promises are there. Uh, it is not His will that your loved ones should perish, uh, but that they would be uh, saved. Uh, and you begin to cry tears of joy uh, to say to remember uh, that he heard Daniel the first time that he prayed uh, and you begin to see it over and over uh, and you begin to realize uh, that it may be tears of sorrow uh, it may be tears of joy uh, but when a person with all of their heart and complete sincerity cries out to God uh, and we couple that with a fervent plea uh, just like the psalmist did uh, with a plea uh, and a promise uh, to keep God's statutes Uh, he said God I need you I need an answer from you But he said, I'm going to let you know something, God. My desire, my promise, and my commitment is to keep your statutes. As I said Sunday, this is where it inserts here as well. Don't talk the talk if you're not going to walk the walk. Scripture tells us it's better not to make an oath than to make one and not keep it. And the psalmist said, I'm ready 
to keep it. Though others fall away, and though others do this, and though others do that, I, I'm not just crying. Have you ever seen somebody cry just to get their way? I have. Just cry to get their way. That's not what the psalmist is implying here. That's not what he's doing here. It's out of sincerity. We call those crocodile tears. My daughter's real good at it. She's getting, she's getting better. In her young age, she's real good at it. She's crying until she got her way, and all of a sudden, all those tears disappear. I'm like, wow, that's amazing, babe, how you can do that. To call it turning on the waterworks. Flip the switch. And, and they know that they can tug on heartstrings, and, 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 but you can't manipulate God like that. So the psalmist is understanding, letting us understand here, it's not a manipulation. It's a sincerity. It's a plea. It's a promise. Uh, it's a commitment. Uh, crying out to be delivered uh, from perilous circumstances. Uh, the psalmist added that he would observe God's testimonies uh, or live up to his solemn charges. Uh, he even said very early in the morning he would rise up, cry out, for God. He would raise himself up and uh, begin to cry early in the morning for aid uh, and for d- direction. Uh, he had placed his hope of tr- or full trust in God's word. Uh, so when he put his trust in God's word, uh, he got up early in the morning and said before the sun would come up, I need your word as we said a few weeks ago. I believe Psalms 105. Uh, it's your word. Uh, verse 105, excuse me. Uh, it's your word would be a lamp under my feet uh, and a light under my pathway. Uh, and just a few stanzas earlier Uh, that that light would shine on the inside of my heart uh, that though I may be surrounded by darkness uh, that there's plenty of light within me Uh, we need to learn that prayer church because we're surrounded as we sung tonight we're living in a world of sin and darkness Uh, we're facing satanic forces like a flood uh, but we are promised power Uh, if we preach that Sunday night I'm kept uh, by the power of God Uh, we're promised power to fight against them Uh, and that blood, that that light that shines within us uh, and the song Mama said, I'm going to rise up early in the morning and cry out for his aid because if I ever needed the Lord before, I sure do need him now. So he placed his hope and his full trust in what? God's word. A couple weeks ago I asked, is there anybody that you can take 100% completely at their word? Anybody that you can put full trust and full confidence in? And we we may be able to name some folks here and there and find it, well, we thought we could, but they failed, or they came up short, or they missed the mark. Maybe not all the time on purpose. But they did their best, but just couldn't meet up to the expectation. They, they made a promise and did everything in their power to keep the promise, but just fell short of keeping the promise. Doesn't make us love them any less. We can appreciate the, the, the commitment, devotion, the trying. But when God makes a promise, He said, He's not a man that He should lie. And he's not slack. We get slack sometimes concerning our promises. The psalmist is making some pretty in-depth promises to God throughout Psalms 119. uh, And he admits sometimes in the Psalms, uh, as we've been studying this, Psalms 119, uh, he's had to admit sometimes in some places, uh, Lord, I've made some promises and I've been slack concerning my promises. I won't ask you to raise your hand tonight, but how many of you have been slack concerning some promises that you've made to God? I, I have, not purposely, uh, but we begin to get uh, distracted and, uh, and different things, uh, but God is not that way. He knows that I need God, and I can fully trust in God's Word. I love that song, so Jesus said if, if Jesus said He'll do it, then He'll do it. Jesus said He'll do it, then amen. So therefore, He confidently waited or looked for the fulfillment of God's promise to come to the aid of His servants. He confidently waited. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He's not failed you before. He's sure enough not going to start now. If God said He would do it, you can confidently wait on it. Uh, if the Lord said to you, I'll heal you. Uh, if He said, by your stripes, by my stripes you were healed. Uh, you can confidently wait on it and believe uh, that Jesus is going to do it. Uh, if God has given you a promise, uh, don't think for a moment that He will not f- fulfill that promise. Uh, you may have to cross some tears. Uh, you may have to put some tear-stained pages uh, in that Bible of yours. Uh, but keep trusting God. Uh, trust in the Lord with all thy heart lean not to thine own understanding uh, but in all thy ways uh, acknowledge the Lord and he will bring it to pass keep your trust in God's word Uh, don't veer away from the word of God 
Don't veer away from his book. Don't veer away from the pages of his word. So that's what we're looking at tonight. That's what the, the psalmist is talking about. So let's, let's look. You thought I was almost done, but I'm just getting started. You should learn that from Sunday. Two verses. First two verses, 145 and 146, is paired together in this prayer, this cry, this stanza. He said, I cry with my whole heart, hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, save me, I shall keep thy testimony. That's some pretty bold statements that the psalmist is making. In verse 145, he said, I will, I will keep thy statutes. In verse 146, he said, and I shall keep thy testimonies. Do you have that kind of faith in your commitment to God that you with the psalmist uh, can say, I will keep thy statutes uh, and I shall keep thy testimonies. Uh, We know that God is faithful concerning His promises, uh, but are we ready as I preach to you Sunday morning uh, ready to take a bold stand for God, uh, just like those Hebrew boys did and said, listen, I don't know what it's going to cost me. I I don't know what's about to happen here. Uh, I know my God is able to deliver me and I know my God will deliver me, uh, but if He does not deliver me, I'm still not bowing down. Uh, Are we ready to stand with the Hebrew boys uh, and with the psalmist here uh, and make that kind of commitment to the Lord? I will keep thy statutes uh, and I shall keep thy testimonies. We must. uh, If if we're going to make that kind of stand, we must cry out for salvation. uh, Because as I told you Sunday, uh, there's no keeping ourselves. If we're going to be kept, uh, God's going to do the keeping. Uh, We're kept uh, by the power of God. Uh, And if we want to be kept by the power of God, uh, we must submit uh, to the Word of God. Uh, And he said we must cry out for salvation. Uh, Not that we may have the ease and comfort of being saved. Too many people want the easy salvation. They want to serve God as long as it's easy. He said perilous times will come. He said think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. There's going to be some tests. Has anybody ever heated the furnace seven times hotter than ever before for you? Have you ever been thrown into a den of lions? Have you ever sat in your backyard with sore bowls from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Scraping it with a pot shear? Sister Amy was pretty close when we were in Boniface. She was miserable. She, she got some, some kind of rash that broke out from head to toe. They, the parsonage that we was living in there, there they uh, had some stuff. Squirrels had been in the attic and, and some different things in the attic had come across and infested our bed. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if I was just uh, uh, had a super immune system. It just struck her, though. But it's, it, she just, so I can only imagine what Job's wife felt like when he looked out, when she looked out and saw him there in that backyard. I remember on Sunday afternoon, uh, Amy didn't go to church that day. She was head to toe, just itching and everything. And I, I went to church requesting prayer and, and come in and see her in that misery. And I can't imagine, can't imagine what she, she must have felt like. Job's wife must have felt like seeing that. Can't imagine what Job must have felt like. Amy tried to tell me what she felt like, but I can't even begin to imagine what she was feeling. And to know that and to, to have that. But through those times, we just keep trusting in God. You know, Job's wife looked at him and said, just curse God and die. She said, well, I, she didn't know what else to do. But, but I'm thankful to report to you that pastor's wife didn't say, let's, let's give up ministry. I'm not doing this. She didn't say, I'm throwing in the towel. I don't want to be a pastor's wife anymore. I don't want to do this. She probably felt like, get me out of here. She did tell me, get me out of here. And we worked hard on it and, and worked diligently to, to be able to, to take care of the situation. Uh, but at no point did she, she say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm serving God and we're, we're preaching His gospel and we're going across the, uh, the nation and all the way over back here and we're doing all this and, and this is what happens to me. I, I, I'm not doing this anymore. Never uh, did she say that. And the psalmist said, uh, if we're going to trust in God, if we're going to make a commitment to God, there's going to be times we're going to have to cry out him, to Him for salvation. And, uh, and knowing that it's not always going to be easy uh, and it's not always going to be comfortable uh, but we do it that we may have an opportunity uh, of serving God uh, even with more cheer even when, when it's tough we can do it with joy 
Even when it's hard, we don't understand, we can still, don't have to have a counterfeit smile, but we can have true joy, true peace, true, true longing and yearning, saying there's nothing that I would rather do. Sometimes through ministry and even through a Christian walk, it's, it's, a, it's a place of hard knocks, it's a hard situations and troubles and trials. But we realize the psalmist is letting us know and reminding us in these two verses, uh, if we're going to make those kind of pleas to God uh, and, and we begin to let Him know, God, I will stand, I will keep, uh, and I will do it. We realize that, but it's not by power nor by might, but it's by the, His Spirit. Uh, and so we cry out to God and say, listen, Lord, I, I made some promises to you and I need you to help me keep them. Aren't you thankful that He does? That The psalmist is letting us know this in verse 147 pretty tough situations that he's reminding us that we'll go through at times. Verse 147 and 148, he says, I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried, I hoped in thy word. He's got, the, he's got his word open early in the morning. Any, ever been there? Situation's too big for me, so I, I, I'm not looking anywhere for any answer. They didn't say I got up early in the morning and began to, to call my friends and my family and begin to get opinions of situations. Uh, but we find what the psalmist is saying here uh, is before the dawning of the day, before daybreak, uh, I need an answer from God. I need revelation. I need direction. I, I need guidance. Uh, so he knows where to go. He's got his book open. Uh, he's got his Bible open. Uh, and he's praying and he's crying out to God. He said, I hope hoped in thy word. Uh, he's opening the word of God. Uh, and, and there's some times that we go through some stuff. Uh, I, I don't know if you've ever done it, but I've done it. I've had that Bible open and I've reminded God uh, of the promises of his word. Uh, I've been married to that young lady for 18 years uh, because I reminded God uh, that you said in your word it's not good uh, for man to be alone so you created for him a helpmate uh, and I need mine pretty soon Lord. Uh, and begin to pray and begin to plea uh, and begin to look at the word of God and say God this is what your word says and I believe it to be true and I'm taking hold of the promises of his word and then he said my eyes prevented the night watches that I may meditate in thy word so the psalmist said I was up early in the morning not to go hunting not to go fishing not to even go to work he said but I got up early in the morning to look in your word and to cry out to you and he said, though I got up early in the morning, I don't know about you, but if I get up early in the morning, I want to go to bed early, early in the evening. But the psalmist said, I'm trying to hurry, Sister Mary. The psalmist said, I got up early in the morning, and I love this. I got up early in the morning reading your word and praying, and my need is so great that I was even up late at night reading your word and praying. Understand something here. The psalmist had some busy days just like us. His days was full of business. He said that he, he had things to do throughout the day. But with that, with all that, he would not let that excuse him. And we cannot let uh, excuse us uh, from our time of secret devotion. We can't say, well, I'm too busy. I got too much going on. You better take time to put some tear stains in the Word of God. You better take some time to know what the Word says and to be able to apply it to your life and be able to cry out. See, we need to learn not just to pray, but we need to learn to pray God's Word. We need to be able to know because when the devil came against Jesus and tempted Him there after He fasted for 40 days in the wilderness... You know what? Jesus came back uh, as man. He was 100% man in this moment. Uh, he was as vulnerable as he could be at that moment. Uh, and he looked at the devil when he came with all those temptations. Uh, and he said, it is written. Uh, he was able to come against him uh, and say, it is written. Uh, he was able to say, Satan. Uh, we can pray, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Uh, but if we haven't read it, we got to say, well, my pastor said it's written. My Sunday school teacher said it's written. Mama said it's written. Daddy said it's written. No, we need to open up the Word of God and know what it says and begin to pray. And the psalmist is saying, though my day is busy, that does not excuse me from having secret devotion. It's better to take time from sleep, as the psalmist did, than to not find time for prayer. You'd be better off being in the middle of the day feeling, man, I wish I'd have got more sleep last night. 
the, the know and knowing that you spent some time in prayer. The psalmist did, and he took that time for prayer. This is our comfort. When we pray in the night, that we can never come unseasonably to the throne of grace. For we may have access to it at all hours. So, if you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning and pray, you know what? He hears you. He hears you. You call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, you might get my voicemail. I might not hear it. If I hear it ring, I'm going to answer. If I, if I hear that text go off at 4.30 in the morning, I'll respond, won't I, Sister Mary? I'll respond if I hear it. But if I, I don't hear it, uh, but you know what? God hears every time you pray. Uh, Daniel thought that God may have not have heard him after 21 days because he didn't see anything happening. Uh, but what did that angel say when he got to him? God heard you the first time you pray. God hears you. He's heard your prayer. Uh, God hadn't forgot about you. God hadn't placed uh, your need on the back burner. God's working even now. When they thought that Jesus was in the grave for those three days, uh, he was not in the grave. Uh, he was working for them. He was getting... Uh, something very important. He was getting the keys to death, uh, hell, and the grave uh, in his hands. Uh, so understand that God hears you uh, no matter what time or day or night that you pray, uh, God hears you. We can never uh, come at an unseasonable, unreasonable time before God. Uh, Baal may be asleep, but God never slumbers or sleeps. There are any hours in which we come to him, he'll be there. Verse 149, Psalmist says, hear my voice. He's dependent on something here, according to thy loving kindness. Hear my voice according to thy loving kindness, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgment. How do you pray like that? Because you've studied and you know the loving kindness of God. You, you begin to pray and ask something according to God's judgment. You better know something about God's judgment before you begin to pray like that. So the psalmist is, is, is writing this, this prayer and this song, the stanza here, saying, Hear my voice according to thy loving kindness. O Lord, quicken me uh, according to thy judgment. Number one, upon God's loving kindness. Uh, he is saying, God, hear me according to thy loving kindness. Uh, he is good. He's good. Somebody just recently wrote a song. He's a good, good father. He's good. It's one of the early prayers that we learn in childhood. God is great. God is good. Therefore, He will be good to me. So we hope in that mercy. His loving kindness manifested to me will help to quicken me uh, and put life into me. So the psalmist is saying, hear my voice according to thy loving kindness. Uh, he's saying, God, I know that you're good. Uh, I need your goodness. Uh, I need you to be good to me. I put my hope in your mercy. Uh, I'm putting my trust in your loving kindness. Uh, and I need your loving kindness to be manifested to me. Uh, how many would say tonight, I need God's goodness to be manifested unto me. Uh, I need God's loving kindness uh, to be manifested unto me. So we need to pray like the psalmist did uh, and say, hear my voice, God. Uh, and when you hear my voice, uh, hear it according to thy loving kindness uh, because I need your loving kindness. Uh, I need the goodness of God. Uh, I need you to quicken me. Uh, I need you to put fresh oil in me. Uh, I need you to put fresh fire in me. Uh, I need a fresh desire. Uh, that's what we're saying uh, when we need a revelation. God, uh, give me a revelation of your loving kindness. Uh, what are we saying? Uh, God, remind me of your goodness least I forget. Remind me that you ain't never done me nothing but good. It's your faithful as promised and I put my trust in you and I know that you will quicken me. Number two, upon God's judgments. Oh Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. Now, it's one thing to pray for his loving kindness and his mercy and his grace. But he was even willing to pray, quicken me according to thy judgment. He's saying that is his wisdom. He knows what I need. How many knows that tonight? God knows what we think we know what we need. We think that we got it all figured out. There's been times that you've never done this before, just me, that you thought you needed something only to find out that's not what you needed at all. That not, not... Nowhere near what you needed. 
You're thankful that God did not give you what you thought you needed. And so we know He's good, but we also know that as He judges and He's, he, he, he takes and quickens us according to His judgment, He knows what I need and He knows what's good for me. He knows what's best for me. And therefore, will quicken me. God knows what I need, and though God knows what's good for me, therefore He'll quicken me. Therefore He'll move in my situation. God knows what's best for you. So many people say, well, you can't do this, and you can't do that as a Christian, and, and this is laid out in His Word, and that is laid out in His Word, that, that we can't do anything, and we can't. No, God knows what's good for you. He knows what's best for you. And if God says leave it alone, don't touch it. So he will quicken me or his promise. The word which he has spoken. How many times have we heard his word? We've heard his spoken word. Whether it's through a sermon, whether it's through a Sunday school class, whether it's through him speaking to your heart. But you know where God speaks to us the most? It's when we open up his word. It's already written, already there. So I haven't heard from God. People say, God's never spoke to me. It tells me you've never read His Word. Because if you've read His Word, God spoke to you. And His Word is there. And, and the psalmist knew that because in reading that Word, he found out about God's loving kindness. Remember now, he's just reading the first five books of the Bible. He, he's reading those hard books. He, he's reading the, the Torah. He's reading the, the, where the law is found. Uh, he's reading that that Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy it. I came to fulfill it, uh, letting us know that it's fulfilled in Christ. Uh, and he said, reminding you uh, that the law is a schoolmaster that brings you to Christ. Uh, and he's letting us know that it brings us to the mercy and grace of God uh, and to know that everything uh, is taken care of. Uh, they had to run around uh, and worry about what, uh, what uh, clothes that they were going to put on. They couldn't wear this particular fabric with that particular fabric. We can't keep up with all the ceremonial laws uh, of that Old Testament. Uh, and through Jesus, we don't have to keep up uh, with all of that. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy it, uh, but I am the fulfillment of it, uh, and I paid that price uh, so we can come with even more confidence with, to God uh, and say, God, uh, according to your loving kindness uh, and according to your perfect will, uh, you've quickened me uh, according to your judgments, uh, and so I'm going to lean on the promises of God which you have spoken and have my mercy secured by that covenant that I have with you. Then he said in verse 150, 151, They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. As I said earlier, it seems like in every stanza, the psalmist has something to say about these folks. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. He said, it's the happiness of the saints that when trouble is near, God is near. Paul wrote this in the New Testament. He said, it seems like that when I endeavor to do good, evil is present with me. He said, but where sin doth abound, grace does therefore much more abound. So thy promises here and his happiness of the saints. We, we've got some happiness as saints. That when trouble is near, because trouble is going to come, that God is near. When trouble is close to you, I'll go a step further. When trouble is close to you, God is closer to you. When trouble is at your door, God's on your couch. <laughs> put, it, put it there. Just bring it on in. When trouble is banging on the door, trying to, like the big bad wolves, I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff and I'm going to blow your house down. Uh, you don't have to worry about it because uh, trouble's at the door, but God's already in the door. Why? Because we've already swung open that door uh, and said, come into my heart, come into my life, uh, take all of me. Uh, so the psalmist can pray with confidence there uh, and understand trouble's going to come your way. You're not exempt. You're not exempt from trouble. Church might be tax exempt, but we're not trouble exempt. But we know that when trouble comes, God's going to be there, 
And with that, knowing that, we understand this. We said this and shared this out of Romans 8 Sunday. No trouble. No trouble can separate between them and him. There's nothing that can separate me from my God. There's nothing. No trouble that can come and be a wedge between me and my God. If I keep that, I will. If I keep that, I will keep. I will hold you. I'm not letting you go. I, I'm not letting you go. I'm not going to, to be removed from you. I need some volunteers to come help me tonight. Jump up. Sister Lexi, come help me. Come on, brother. You can be God. Hold my hand. All right, Lexi. You're going to be trouble. You look like trouble. I want you to come between me and him. We're, we're bound together, one accord. I, I'm bound to him. Come between me and him. Try to get through. You can't do it, can you? You're trouble. You're supposed to be bad to the bone. Your daddy's taught you some of that taekwondo or Fu Manchu. Put a karate chop on it. Go ahead. It ain't going to break. Why? Because trouble can't get between you and God when you've got your mind made up that you're going to hold on. Did you hear what, I, what she said when I said, go ahead and put a karate chop? She said, it ain't going to break that. You know what? The, the, the trouble that will come your way is going to realize that, to, to know uh, that when it comes against you and comes at you, it's going to make that say, it ain't going to break that. Uh, uh, and they understand something. Uh, as we said about the Hebrew boys, something they did not consider uh, is the hold that they had on their God. They thought that they could break that hold. They said, we need wise men, smart young men, uh, and, and we're going to brainwash them. Uh, but what they have to understand uh, is we've got something uh, that they did not consider. We've got a made up mind. We've got a hold on the Word of God. I've woke up too many mornings early in the morning, tear staining the pages of this book. I've stayed up too many late nights, tear staining this book. Amy's gone looking for me too many times to find me uh, in a prayer closet where I fell asleep from praying and seeking the face of God for a little bit of trouble, or a lot of trouble, uh, to come between me and my God. Uh, oh, He may distract. He may prevent. He may upset us. Uh, but I have to go back to that song, Sister Diane's song. Uh, we may get disheartened sometimes, but Lord, don't let me stay here too long. Uh, don't let trouble get you down. Uh, don't let trouble get you away from God. He may slap you around, get you distracted. You may see stars for a minute, uh, but you look up and you say, uh, you know what? I still got a hold of the Word of God. You may feel like you just went 20 rounds with the devil. And when it's all said and done, uh, Brother Douglas used to say it all the time, devil will kick you around, he'll give you a bloody nose, uh, and he'll pop your teeth. Uh, remember that, Sister Pat? He would say, man, the devil will lay it on you. Uh, but to know when it's said and done, uh, when the devil's gone through all that, when he's kicked you and he's bit you, uh, he's cussed at you, he's accused you, uh, he's done everything that he could uh, to get you down, might be laying flat on your back, uh, but you hold it up and say, look here, I still got a hold uh, of the Word of God. Trouble came my way. Oh, the day told me I was broke. They told me I was bankrupt. They told me I lost everything. They told me I wasn't going to make it. But you know what I did through it all? I know that my God is able and I know that my God will do it. But if for some reason He does not deliver me from this trouble, I'm still not bowing down. I'm still holding on to the Word of God. And I'll put some more tear stains in the book to try to figure out What's next? Give me revelation, Lord. Give me revelation. I done lost my place again, y'all. He said here, all that ever cried out to God and trusted in His Word. It's not where I was at. Hold on, getting ahead of myself. He says here that He will never be too far to seek that He's within our call. And that means that we have Him there within his call. He is very present help in time of trouble. And finally tonight, verse 152. Concerning thy testimonies. So God, I want to talk to you about your testimonies. I want to talk to you about your word. When's the last time you talked to God about his word? 
A lot of people don't know enough about God's word to talk to him about his word. But the psalmist did. He said, concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast found in them forever. He said, I've known your word for a long time, Lord. That's why I keep holding on to it. That's why I keep putting tear stains on the pages. Because it's never failed. I found it to be true, and I found it as founded them to be forever. He said the promises are founded forever. They're that way so that when heaven and earth shall be passed away, every iota, every crossing of the T, every promise of God is going to stand firm. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will endure and stand forever. So there may be things that's going to come your way. But understand, the promises of God, they're forever. All that ever cried out to God. You ever cried out to God? This includes you then. All that ever cried out to God. And when you cried out to God, did you trust Him? This includes you then. So if you've cried out to God, and in that crying out to God, you trusted Him. If you hadn't listened to me all night, listen to me now. All that ever cried out to God and trusted in His Word will own that they have found Him faithful. If you've cried out to Him and you've trusted Him at His Word, then you can own that and you can declare that and you can stand firm on that. I've cried out to God and I've trusted in His Word and i found Him faithful. You know what it means? It means that person saying, God never failed me. Not when I put complete trust in Him. Now when I Said, God, I'm trusting you in this, but I'm going to try this just in case. No. That goes back to those first couple of verses in sincerity and complete devotion of God. I don't have a B plan. I'm trusting God. I have not lined up some other things just in case He doesn't show up. He's my everything. He's all that I need. So we can own that, and we can say, when I put my complete trust in Him, and I cried out to God, and I left it all in His hands, He was faithful. I didn't think it would work out. I really didn't. But then I cried out to God, and I leaned on His Word, and I trusted in Him, and He did it. He was faithful. Every, everybody that's ever did that can say the same thing. Let's just stand with me tonight in closing. I want to make this final statement that I want us to come to prayer once again this evening, if you've got your Bible with you, I want you to bring it with you to the altar. As we close, spend time around these altars this evening in prayer, not necessarily closing out, but I want you to spend some significant time in prayer tonight, calling upon God. Too many times, the pastor preached a long time. I, I, I told Amy Sunday night, I said, some folks came down to the altar and knelt down for about two or three minutes like they wore slap out like they just preached for an hour. <laughs> and then they were up and gone. I'm the one to preach for an hour. We, we, too many times we, we hear the word and we receive the word and we take it. And I'm just, just wondering sometimes how can we process all of that and talk to God about that in three minutes. He's, he's trying to do so much and he wants to do so much for us. Sometimes we've got to open up the word of God. And we just got to pray until we pray through. We might have to pray until tears begin to flow. We begin to take him at his word. But the tear-stained word, it is the word that's taken the heart. The tear-stained word is the word that's been taken to heart. The tear-stained word is not just the word that's been taken to heart, but it's the word that's been put to action. The tear-stained word of God. Aren't you glad that you have it? You got yours? Like, like I said, whether it's on your iPad, your cell phone, I've got it in both places, I understand. Or you might have the book. However you have it tonight, that tear-stained word of God, it's tear-stained because it's a word that's been taken to heart and it's cut deep. Sometimes that word of God will deal with our hearts and convict us Bring us to tears. And then sometimes it comforts us and gives us peace. Brings us to tears. 
I'm a man, I don't cry. I guarantee you, when God gets a hold of your heart, some point or fashion, tears are going to come. And when you begin to have that desire, begin to put the Word of God, take it to your heart, and put to action. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Father, we love you tonight. We're thankful for this 19th stanza of Psalms 119 that reminds us, Lord, that not only do we need to be in your Word, but we need to be crying out in accordance to your Word. Lord God, that we, when we're praying and looking for answers and it does not seem that those answers are coming, that you said, study, show thyself approved, that we can open up the Word of God and there's the answer. Maybe it'll cause us to have to get up early. Maybe you'll deal with us and we're looking for answers and you, you deal with us and take us to your word early in the morning or late in the evening or in the middle of the night. We open up the Bible and just the answer that we've been searching for is found there. That will bring us to tears, I'm sure. Lord, we put that kind of trust and that kind of confidence in your word and we know that you've not left us without a comforter and you've not left us without a road map. You've not left us without clear instruction. It's all found within the pages of this Bible. Lord, we're thankful for the Word of God, for it is quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. And we're thankful for that tonight. And I pray, Lord, as we gather around these altars tonight, Lord, that we'll not only take this Word to heart, but we'll put this Word to action. We ask you right now to touch us as we gather around these altars tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Will you come tonight, gather around the altar tonight? Just talk to God. Say, God, I want to take your word to my heart. And then I want to take it and I want to put your word to action.